This video is brought to you by NordVPN. In 2008, the then leader of the African National Congress, Jacob Zuma, declared that the ANC would be in power in South Africa until Jesus comes back. Zuma's comments have stood the test of time. Despite years of economic mismanagement and recurring corruption scandals, the ANC have won an outright majority at every national election in South Africa's post-apartheid history. Somewhat ironically though, it's Zuma's return to politics via his new MK party that could spell the beginning of the end for the ANC. Polling suggests that MK could pull the ANC below 40%, and on Tuesday, South Africa's electoral court ruled that Zuma's candidacy was constitutional, putting an end to the ANC-led efforts to get the courts to stop Zuma's return. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the upcoming elections, how Zuma's return via MK could deny the ANC a majority, and what this would mean for South Africa. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So to understand this story, you need to know a bit about South Africa's political landscape and the ANC's long-standing electoral dominance. Basically, for most of the 20th century, the ANC were one of the leading anti-apartheid movements in South Africa. They became a political party to contest South Africa's first post-apartheid elections in 1994, where, under the leadership of Nelson Mandela, they won an overwhelming majority, with 63% of the vote. South Africa's electoral system is broadly proportional, so this translated to 252 of the 400 available seats in Parliament. Originally, the ANC were a relatively competent political force. South Africa's GDP per capita increased by 50% between 1993 and 2007, leading to a significant improvement in living standards. The ANC were also responsible for creating a threadbare but nonetheless vital welfare state, which helped facilitate a reduction in racial inequality. The ANC were duly rewarded with even larger majorities at the ballot box, winning 66% of the vote in 1999 and an astonishing 70% of the vote in 2004. South Africa quickly became a sort of one-party state, with ANC loyalists occupying basically every important position of power in government and civil society. Unfortunately, things started to go wrong around 2008. This was in part because of the global financial crisis, but South Africa's relative decline also coincided with the rise of Jacob Zuma, who became leader of the ANC in 2007 and president of South Africa in 2009. After Zuma took over, GDP growth stagnated, national debt ballooned from 30% of GDP to over 50%, unemployment rose from 21.5% in 2008 to 28% in 2018, and wealth inequality remained at historic highs. Zuma's presidency was dogged by innumerable allegations of corruption, and he was jailed in 2021 for contempt of court, after refusing to testify in one of these cases. None of the other charges stuck, however, and he spent just two months in prison before being released on medical grounds. The release was never ruled illegal, but Zuma never returned to prison, supposedly because of overcrowding and, quote, a surge in gangsterism. Anyway, the ANC's vote share steadily declined under Zuma, who himself became increasingly unpopular until his resignation in 2017. He was then replaced as leader of the ANC by a business tycoon called Cyril Ramaphosa, who narrowly defeated Zuma's ex-wife, who was endorsed by Zuma in the leadership ballot. There was a lot of hope when Ramaphosa came to office, but his presidency has so far been a disappointment. South Africa's economy has remained stagnant, although quite a lot of this is down to the pandemic and the subsequent global economic turmoil. Poverty is ubiquitous, youth unemployment is running above 50%, and corruption has probably got worse rather than better. The latest issue revolves around South Africa's national electricity company, ESCOM, which, in part thanks to rampant corruption, just can't supply the country with anywhere near the electricity it needs, and has therefore resorted to rolling blackouts. This is why the ANC's poll numbers have been steadily dropping ahead of this year's elections, which are due in May. Polling from late last year, for instance, suggested that the ANC might fall below 50% of the popular vote. But even if they'd come in only a few points short of a majority, i.e. with like 47 or 48% of the vote, they could probably stitch together a coalition with some minor parties. However, things began looking significantly more difficult for the ANC in December, when Zuma announced that, instead of the ANC, he'd be campaigning for MK, 
an otherwise unknown far-left nativist party founded only a couple of months earlier. The ANC tried to ban Zuma and MK from running by claiming that they didn't follow the correct rules when registering with the Electoral Commission. And last month, the Electoral Commission themselves barred Zuma from running over his contempt of court conviction, citing a clause in South Africa's constitution that prevents anyone sentenced to more than 12 months in prison from holding public office. Predictably, Zuma appealed the decision, and on Tuesday, South Africa's electoral court ruled in his favour on the grounds that Zuma's sentence followed civil, not criminal proceedings, and was shortened by remission, albeit illegally. Anyway, this is bad news for the ANC, because polling suggests that MK could garner about 15% at May's national election, with most of these voters coming from the ANC. Polling aggregated by the Financial Times suggests that MK are on track to win roughly 14% of the national vote, which has pulled the ANC below 40%. If this happens, the ANC probably have to form a coalition with either MK or the EFF. Neither of these are great options. The EFF's policy platform includes the forcible repatriation of farmlands from white South Africans, forced nationalisation of mines, banks and other quote strategic sectors of the economy, and sending arms to both Hamas and Russia to help Putin's invasion of Ukraine, while Zuma's politics, and by extension that of the MK, are explicitly anti-ANC. The party itself is named after the disbanded armed wing of the ANC, and Zuma has spent the past few months attacking the ANC for losing sight of what he calls its revolutionary purpose. Economically, MK has similar policies to the EFF, and on the campaign trail, Zuma himself has blamed South Africa's various woes on, quote, foreign nationals, and proposed policies like sending pregnant teenagers to Robben Island, where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned. Whoever the ANC ends up forming a coalition with, it's unlikely to be good news for South Africa in the short term. Their waning popularity has forced the ANC into coalition in some of South Africa's biggest cities recently, and the results have been predictably chaotic. Johannesburg is perhaps the best example of this. The ANC lost control of the city in 2021, but the city has been unable to form a stable administration ever since, churning out six mayors in three years. Nonetheless, perhaps the optimistic take here is that this is the necessary price that South Africa has to pay if it wants to transition away from the ANC. And given the ANC's record, this might well be a price worth paying. Now, watching our videos, it's understandable if, at times, you feel like the world isn't terribly safe. And unfortunately, this can be the case online too. You might try your best to keep everything secure, maybe you try to rotate through favourite passwords online, but that's not always enough to keep you safe. In fact, the most common form of account hacking these days is called credential stuffing. Essentially, you use one of your normal passwords on a website that's poorly maintained, and then if it gets compromised, you could find that information landing on the dark web. Hackers then just attempt the same email and password combinations on your social network accounts, streaming services, banks, you get the point. Luckily for you, NordVPN has a whole bunch of tools that can keep you safe online. With their suite of threat protection tools, including a dark web monitor, which notifies you if someone leaks your credentials. It's not just that though, their threat protection can also warn you about phishing links and block malicious ads before you even see them. It really is all-round protection for your digital life. And if you sign up for a two-year plan using our link, you'll not only get a massive discount, but you also get four extra months totally free. So if you want to support the channel and improve our journalism, then make sure that you use the link in the description so that they know that you came from us. 